Well, folks, I think today what I'll talk about is what's wrong with NASCAR 2? What's wrong with NASCAR 1 got quite a few hits, so we're going to go for it again. What's wrong with NASCAR 2? Well, let's first define NASCAR. There's two NASCARs. NASCAR, the organization, um, headed by the France family and Brian France uh, and, and Mike Helton and Robin Pemberton, etc., etc. NASCAR Town is that little city of about 5,000 people that comprise all of the people that are involved in, uh, in NASCAR racing. Not maybe all of them, but quite a few, particularly the ones that make races. That's why NASCAR is such a big thing when it goes hits the road. It has its own fleet of airplanes. It, uh, uh, U.S. Airways loves us, Delta, everybody else, and of course the hotel motels loves us because not everybody has a motor on. Uh, so the NASCAR town, we have to, diff we, we have to look at and say, uh, okay, their NASCAR town is, is it, that's what really makes NASCAR. NASCAR makes the rules, but NASCAR town makes NASCAR. Now, what's wrong with NASCAR right now is we've got shrinking TV ratings, a little better than what we hoped they would be this year. We've got a lot of empty seats. That is the biggest single thing that we got wrong with us right now. Lots of empty seats, as, we, as we've seen in just about every track, except maybe those tracks who have already taken their seats down and like California, California looked like they had a heck of a crime. Well, they sort of did, but this was after they peeled the seats down from a hundred and some thousand down to maybe 80 or 70,000, okay? So it looked like they had a good crowd. There's nothing wrong with that. That's a still a, that's, that's a, 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 a pretty good crowd. But where have all these other people gone? Uh, why aren't more people watching it on television? Well, let's look at the TV ratings first. NASCAR still, when we have a race, is most of the time number one. We certainly walloped Indianapolis this year, uh, mainly because the Coca-Cola 600 was at night, uh, where your viewership is a lot greater. Indy was in the daytime when a lot of people were out having Labor Day picnics and everything else. Um, but the problem is, it ratings have gone down somewhat, and uh, so how do we address these problems? Why why do we have this problem? I think uh, I outlined it pretty good in the last time that I talked. I I talked about uh, what I thought was uh, uh, the reason. I thought we'd gotten too fancy. Uh, I thought that uh, we had tried to concoct this sport that didn't exist. We still are a sport of the working class people. The truck driver, the dock worker, the backhoe operator, all those people that work with their hands. Blue collar people, people I was brought up with. There's not a thing wrong with them. They make America, they've made, a, they've made America the great country that it is. Now, a lot of people that came into NASCAR when we were growing so fast, they didn't like that kind of NASCAR. They wanted to change it. They didn't like the sign that was at the Cherokee Speedway in Gaffney, South Carolina that says, Cherokee Speedway, the place your mother warned you about. They wanted to fancy it up. One of them called me on the phone. It was actually a sponsor, not one of ours, but one of somebody else's, but a friend of mine, and said, you know, we need to do something about the national anthem. We need to raise it up. Well, what do you mean? Well, why don't we have Maria Callas or Pavarotti come in? Well, if I could have gotten Pavarotti, I would have, because I happen to think that would be a stunning thing to have at a race, but at any rate, what I did after he hung the phone up, I called George Jones's agent. George has been at Speedway several times. I always liked George. I got George down to sing the National Anthem. He came into my office and he said, what you want me to do, Humpy? I said, 
George, have you got any twang left? He said, it's 75, Humpy, that's all I got is twang. I said, well, lay it on him. And he did, and it was great, and the people went crazy. I wanted to call that guy then and say, hey, man, this is what racing's all about. It's your common, ordinary, everyday person. If you want to call him a redneck, that's fine. That's what I am. Always have been, always will be, okay? You start taking that out of it, and you don't have anything left. And that's one of the things that we're working to try to get back. And I will say this, NASCAR, not NASCAR town, NASCAR is trying to do something about that, okay? They realize we went too far the other way, okay? So that's a good thing. Now, NASCAR town, there's still a lot of elements in the town that don't like that. Uh, they want us to be fancy and, and footloose and all that kind of stuff, but it ain't going to happen, folks. It's still, a, even though we run on pavement, it's still a, except at Eldora with the trucks, <clears throat> we are a dirt-loving people, and we don't mind that. So, it's kind of like the Gretchen Wilson, the redneck girl. I, maybe that should be our national anthem. I don't know. But we've got to get back to that. we got to, we got to go back. Now, how do we do that? Well, we do a lot of things that, uh, uh, to, 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 to identify ourselves with the, uh, with the people that uh, the, the, the people in the grandstand like. Like Gretchen Wilson. Like... Uh, 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 like country and western singers, they, uh, uh, we, we, we like them, Vince Gill, uh, 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 people like that. So uh, those are some of the things we can do, but the biggest thing we need is rivalries. We've got to have rivals. Great sport exists on rivalries. It was Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. Oh, what a rivalry that was. It took boxing to the very top. Joe Namath took the whole NFL on when he was playing for Sonny Werblin's uh, AFL team. And boy, did he do a job. And people went crazy over that. So rivalries are absolutely necessary to, to, to have great sport. Do we have a rival today? Rivalries today? I don't think we do. Uh, didn't we have rivalries yesterday? You darn better believe we had that. I mean, Bobby Allison and Richard Petty. Oh, that was a that, that that was drama. That was high high drama. Junior Johnson and Curtis Turner, high drama. Junior Johnson, Curtis Turner, and uh, Lee Petty, high drama. Band fenders all on those dirt tracks. It was great. Uh, Bobby Allison back again and David Pearson. That was high drama. Uh, what was higher drama than uh, uh, Cale Yarborough versus Daryl Walter? No higher drama ever existed. Now, except in February 1979 when CBS televised the first Daytona 500 Live. Snowstorm hit the East Coast. Nobody had, uh, everybody was just embedded. They could not leave the house. That's how bad that blizzard was. And the snow and ice went from St. Augustine, Florida, all the way up to Nova Scotia. And it was a stunning snowstorm while the race was going on. And at the end of the race, as we all have heard a million times, we had that great finish with Kale and, uh, Donnie Allison fighting down the back stretch and crashing between three and four and Bobby pulling over and stopping to help his brother out. And the great fight ensued, which was embellished. He didn't have to embellish it, but narrated by the great Ken Squire. And what a job he did. Um, all of a sudden, the United States saw a new sport. It was the Dukes of Hazard. It was... Uh, Technicolor, it was pro football on wheels, it was drama, it was a bunch of good old boys just letting her loose, and they loved it, and uh, it really started the whole growth of the of the sport, and. Uh,